Me and the wife were chatting. Oh, cause about a year ago or more, about all the good times that we had and, and what the future held in store. And she, she, now Pat, don't get me wrong, but of all the things we've done, the one thing my heart is longing for is a holiday in the sun. She says, for lately I've been dreaming that I'm on this big jet plane and I'm landed in this country where there's no such thing as rain. And I'm lying on a sandy beach with a good book in my hand and I'm wearing my bikini and my skin's a golden tan. Says I, now Madge, it's just a dream. Would you have a bit of it? For unless on bikinis like a parachute, so you know it will not fit. <laughs> and I have no time for aeroplanes that's whizzing across the sky. God would have fitted us with wings if he'd have wanted us to fly. So settle down now, woman dear, and put more turf upon the fire. For we're simple country people. We have all that we desire. Well, with that, she started barging about how good she was to me and how she slaved around the farm. And, and of course, I did agree. But she left me feeling guilty. And in the end, she won me round. So next morning, bright and early, me and her, we hit the town. Straight to the travel agents, Madge did promptly go. Sure, I had given me commitment. I couldn't tell her no. And in less than 20 minutes, with a twinkle in her eye, she says we're for Majorca the first week in July. <laughs> oh. oh, she was so excited. She says I can hardly wait and we'll have to buy some suntan oil to protect us from the heat. <laughs> well, I followed her around the town till me two feet they were sore and the suntan oil bought in gallons for it would take all to cover her. <laughs> well, the weeks... They went quickly by, and as the time drew near, two days before we were due to fly, I took the diary. <laughs> and Madge, she sent for a bottle out to the chemist shop. Well, well then, thank God, it thickened, and in the end, it stopped. <laughs> well, do you know I was feeling rightly till me two feet hit on plane? And the toilet seat was where I sat till we touched down in Spain. <laughs> oh, I could hear the captain wishing all a pleasant flight. And me and me gloomy surroundings trying hard to stop the shack. <laughs> well, boys, the heat was wicked upon that foreign soil. And my arse was like a kettle that was coming to the boil. <laughs> Well, the sweat was dripping off me, and on Madge I placed a curse, and then they took us off to our hotel in an air-conditioned bus. Well, thank God that we were travelling in the middle of the night, for Don Bucko, he was fully bent on driving on the right. <laughs> he did not know his highway code. That's one thing for sure, for if he drove like that around home, he'd be called one stupid. <laughs> well, the hotel room, it was lovely. Well, that I have to say. And Madge took to the singing as she put her clothes away. And then she whispered to me, this could be our second honeymoon. <laughs> well, with that, the cramps they started. <laughs> I say, where's that bottle and that spoon? <laughs> well, do you know, I toed and froed the whole night long from the toilet to the bed. And I gazed on Madge's swimsuit and queer thoughts went through my head. For it was spread out on the table like a blanket on a ditch. Says I, the one that sewed it, I hope knowed how to stitch. Well, do you know I was still lying wide awake when the sun rose in the sky? And then suddenly from down below, I heard a joyful cry. Well, I could be wrong, but I thought I heard the sound of water splash. So over to the balcony, I did quickly dash. Well, the sight I see, <laughs> I'll not forget. From that balcony, had knocked 50 years off my life. I've, I felt like 23. <laughs> Or a swimming pool, half full of girls, <laughs> all naked to the waist. 
when the blood went rushing through me veins, I was like a tormented beast. <laughs> Well, I gazed in and eyed her, and she was still fast asleep. And my thoughts were far from Ireland, and my cattle and my sheep. <laughs> well, I shaved myself in record time, and I combed my lock of hair, and I pulled on my brand new swimming trunks that I swore I'd never wear. <laughs> well, I might be easy going, but on certain things I'm not a fool. And in less than 30 seconds, I was sitting by the pool. <laughs> Gazing in all them bosoms, well, well, what a pretty sight. All colours and creations, and me is no way white. Well, there was big ones, there was wee ones, some did sway and some did flop. I was always taught not to stare, but somehow I couldn't stop. God, says I am in heaven, and I didn't have to die. And then I thought it might be a sin, so I'll only chance one eye. <laughs> and then I got chatting to this woman with her hair up in a bun. And says she, why don't you join us and have a little bit of fun? <laughs> Good, says I, I would love to, but I can't swim a stroke. Oh, she says, that's not a problem. And she put on me this rubber yoke. Well, she pulled me round and round the pool and I kicked and splashed away. <laughs> and I thought if my farm was over here, I'd never lose a bale of hay. <laughs> and then suddenly, a shadow <laughs> was blocking out the sun. And mad, she was shouting at the woman with the bun. <laughs> well, I was so embarrassed to hear her roars and bawls. And the next thing Madge was in the water coming straight at me like Jaws. <laughs> and the water had risen three inches round the pool. And Madge, you had me by the throat, called me a bloody fool. But she took me tightly by the arm and, and back up to the room. And the remainder of our holiday was spent in doom and gloom. <laughs> She sat in one corner, reading a bloody book. <laughs> and I sat on the balcony, with orders not to look. <laughs> Her gaze was piercing through me like a gun into my neck. And sure, I could hear the girls below, so boys, they were having crack. I was frustrated, I was tormented, I was taunted, I had teased. My spirits they were lower th than a bull that had just been squeezed. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but still, I suppose it was worth it for the sights that I did see. If I lived to be a hundred, I'll never be the man I used to be. <laughs> ah, but now I'm back in Ireland and I'm, I'm doing the things I always do. But sometimes my memory wanders to that land with skies so blue, especially in the evenings when I'm milking the old cow. <laughs> and I'm thinking in all them bosoms and wondering what they're doing now. You know? <laughs> oh, I daren't mention holidays for fear I might get throttled. And Madge, she got her skin of golden tan.